Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord. Now, I have installed a couple of mods. Yes, I uh, I thought, hey, why not? There are so many cool mods out already. And I'm actually kind of blown away by the amount of diversity that we have in the mods available. And uh, just, just as a by the by, I will be creating some mod showcases that focus on a variety of different mods. That is literally just what I do. You know, that is what I do. I've been doing that for many, many years, you know, supporting the modding community as much as I possibly can in Warband, and Bannerlord is not going to be any different. And um, not entirely sure on the, uh, the style of things just yet in regards to what I'm actually going to do, but... Um, yeah, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. And uh, hopefully you'll like the final product. Anyway, as you can see right here, one of my mods that I just installed, I won't tell you what it is just yet because I think that in general it would be better to have a mod showcase and then just have, you know, all the mods displayed that I'm using in that. And uh, otherwise, basically it just allows you to skip these conversations that happen whenever you speak to someone involving you know step bandits or looters or whatever and it just takes you through to a little a little menu instead which makes everything so much quicker and so much easier to use and i very much like that otherwise what else have i installed well i installed an experience gain increasing mod and you can change all of your settings However you want. Basically, you can you can make it so that you in, you level up insanely fast. Um, before I started uh, before I started recording, I had it on I think three times as much instead of one, obviously because that's normal. You know that's a normal normal uh, speed. And then I found I found that it was way way too fast. Way too fast, so I decided, okay, let me just reload and change the setting. And I changed it to double, so I changed it to two instead of three. And that seems to be a bit better, but there are so many different options that you can utilize in these mods. So much more in terms of um, the customization available. And it seems like my riding skill is actually increasing faster than basically anything else, which is kind of weird because I have all of my skills on double and that's it because i personally feel like the skill progression is a bit slow in bannerlord i feel like it is a bit slow and if you want to get somewhere like you know 125 leadership we've spoken about that in a previous episode being able to get 125 leadership is insanely difficult but with these kinds of mods it will make it much more possible i wouldn't say it would make it easy by any means you can make it easy if you want to that's that, that that's another thing that i just have to mention every single time there is any game that allows you to customize your experience in some way especially sandbox games sandbox games do this in a really really nice way and bannerlord is no different in that respect they really do hand over control of your game experience and just let you run with it. And it's so fun. It really is. It is just so fun. So it's very, very cool. Now, another mod that I've installed is something that I think I think quite a few people would really like. And I think that it is actually kind of fantastic. Such a simple mod as well, but really, really cool. It basically eliminates, as you can see, my medicine is now leveling up as well, quite a bit faster. Now, you see this little button right here? Oh, yeah, I don't know whether you can see that. It's a bit faded at the moment, but uh, I'm actually just going to display exactly what it's doing here. So this is a uh, this is a kind of like a best equip mod. So basically what it will do is let's say I want to take off my hat. Boom, there you go. That button is now available. So you can see here that there's a little arrow or a little two arrows that display that there is a better item in your inventory for you to be able to use. And so how do you uh, how do you get it equipped? How do you find out which item is better? Well, it doesn't matter because you just go boom and then it's done. <laughs> Crazy, right? Okay, so I, I'm gonna just try it out a little bit more here. We're gonna, yeah, so we're gonna equip all kinds of random junk and then we're gonna click this and boom, 
it puts on the best stuff for us once again. It's an absolutely amazing mod. You know what? I'm actually just going to put all the mods that I have installed in the description because I, I feel like they are just so good. They really are just so, so good. And the mod creators definitely deserve as much recognition as possible. I was going to save it for the, the mod showcase video that I was going to make. And obviously that's going to be much more interesting to people, you know, that are interested in modding their game experience. But... <laughs> As it stands, if you're interested in these mods, there will be links down below. And they are so good. They really are. The modding community is just so crazy good. Anyway, as you can see, though, <laughs> my medicine skills leveling up kind of fast. Bear in mind, with my current experience gain mod, what I've done is I've enabled a linear leveling. Now, what that does is it basically makes it so that no matter what level you are, it is going to continue gaining at a pretty reasonable rate every single time. So it's not going to slow down when you get to uh, 200 or something. It will just do the same rate throughout, as far as I'm aware. Bear in mind, however, that you're probably not going to be gaining any skills in other things if you don't have the focus points in them. So, for example, I have all of the focus points in writing skill. I have a whole bunch of those, all of the focus points in bow, of course, as well as tactics and indeed medicine too. Now, bear in mind that there is another mod out there that will also provide you one attribute point every single level. Personally, I feel like that would probably be a really nice addition because let's face it, having attribute points every three levels does limit your character a little bit, but it may just then mean that you have to make more agonizing decisions over your leveling process. But anyway, as you can see, we do have a couple of traits to be able to get here, and I'm going to go for Sharpshooter, which is going to increase our accuracy by 15% while on horseback. It's just, that's, that's crazy. It's crazy good. And what else do we have going on here? Plus 0.5 food in forests and 0.5 food in marshes. Okay, so here's the thing. Not entirely sure why this is even in this particular tree. Uh, I feel like that should probably be in the scouting tree or something like that, but uh, I'm going to take the forest one because I'm not entirely sure if there are any marshes nearby. But anyway, we do have medicine as well. Bonus 10% healing rate increased to the party when mobile on the main map and when stationary. Okay, we're mostly going to be moving, so I'm pretty happy with walk it off at this point. And we are also going to just go for two additional learning points in medicine. I want that to be leveling up super, super fast. Bear that in mind that the main things that are actually leveling up for me are the things that I have focus points in. So you can see that they also do provide a bonus to the speed at which I learn those things, you know, because that's the thing. If I were to use a one-handed, for example, if I use a one-handed, it's probably not going to give me that many skill points in comparison because I just don't have any focus points in it. Bear in mind, however, that there are 21 step bandits over here and I would like to fight them if at all possible. Uh, bear in mind, however, that I also do need to buy more war horses quite badly, actually, because as you can see, we do have some noble recruits that do need to level up. And it would be quite fun to see those level up and become the beasts that they can become. That would be quite fun. So anyway, we're just going to go over here and see what we can do. Bear in mind, I still have my task that my companions are currently doing. It's going to take them another five days. Hopefully they will return with good news, everyone. Yes, hopefully they will do that. There's a reference and a half for you. All right, so it seems like we have some step bandits actually wanting to attack us right here. And as you can see, because of the mod, it is providing us a very swift entry into the battle. I don't have to go through any of those loading screens that cause a little bit of hitching here and there. My frame rate doesn't go down massively or anything. And we just have a really nice, smooth experience as a result. And I very much appreciate that. I really very much do. So let's see if I can actually do some damage now that I have a little bit extra accuracy on my mount. It seems like I am actually, yes.
All right, so I actually decided to uh, concentrate a little bit there. And as you can see, due to our new trait, our ability to hit people on horseback is very nice indeed. Bear in mind, however, that as I've said before, these focus points that I have in various skills will impact how good or bad you may be at gaining the, uh, the skills in, in general. So we are going to be gaining quite a lot more riding skill. I personally felt like riding was not leveling up at all for me. And uh, it was taking a very, very long time to do that. So I thought, why not? Let's see what happens. And uh, we are actually getting a pretty decent amount here. Now, it could be to some people that this is going to be a bit too fast. And I'm not entirely sure if you can use decimal points. So... For example, instead of a whole value that you place into the file itself, because you do have to modify an XML file to be able to make all of this work. So I'm not entirely sure if you could do 1.5, for example. I think 2.0 uh, might be maybe a little bit uh, a little bit too too much, but I don't think that you can do the decimal points. I don't think so, at least. But uh, maybe, maybe you can. I'm, I'm really not sure about that at the moment. Anyway, I'm going to try and buy some more step horses here. I'm actually going to buy all of these, as many as I can get my hands on here. Because I would like to get these guys leveled up into horse archers. Get these. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, let me just reset that, actually, because I want these nobles to actually level up first, if at all possible. And, yeah, we need to get a huge amount of war horses. So I'm thinking that what we might try to do is we might actually try to go and fight in the nearest war, which is actually all the way... Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I actually thought that uh, Vlandia had declared war, but apparently they have not. So that's kind of interesting. Oh, it seems like Yana has advanced in level as well. So bear in mind that you can also customize whether your companions also gain the same amount of experience that you are or whether they don't or you know whatever the case may be so it is uh, pretty cool to see that i'm actually going to advance her riding skill i feel like riding skill could be very very powerful for us in the future so yeah otherwise i guess what i could do is i could participate in a tournament here maybe maybe i could do that now oh, there is no tournament actually going on where is my uh, three days three days all right so I, I i guess we could just occupy ourselves for three days a little bit here and uh, we'll see what's going on mm, ah here we go yes we can go over here we can buy some we can buy some things oh yeah i did invest in a nearby workshop and that was a linen yeah linen workshop over there in baltacant and i think that's i think that's going to be pretty good for us so i basically just went for it and uh, I don't know how much it's actually giving us me, right? Oh, wow. It's giving us 13? Ah, oh, that's pretty awful. That is pretty awful. Okay, so what if, what if I actually go to the Flax, uh, the Flax Village, which is just over there? What if I go over there and I say, Hello, can I buy all of your Flax, please? And then I, you know, sell it to the town. We might very well gain something from that. So... Let's see if I can do that. Wow, there's a lot of flax right here. Yeah, let me just take all of this. Thank you very much. Okay, so there are some people here that might want to speak to us as well. What about this guy? Ah, family feud. All right, let's see if we can do family feud then. Yeah, it's probably going to give me quite a bit now. How much are you going to give me? Ooh, a thousand gold. Oh, very nice, very nice. Okay, so where is the fellow? Where is he? Yeah, I must be over here somewhere. Actually, kind of surprised that I get to keep my armor on here, but uh, I, I guess I am kind of pleased about that at the same time. Now, bear in mind that uh, the fellow that we need to have come over here is 80 meters away at the moment, but we have Komar here, and Komar is very much ready to do what he needs to do. As you can see, he's not even holding on to the horse. He doesn't care. He's not even holding on. Look at him. Look at him. He's just invincible. Absolutely crazy. Anyway, here he is. Ah, uh, yeah, we've just come to talk. Okay, so let's see. You're breaking the law. Let me see if I can uh, maybe achieve something here. 
Oh, ineffective for a 74% chance. Okay, pretty bad. Oh, wow. Okay, Th you know what this means? This means I could have gone for a critical, a critical success right there, but this means we are yeah! about to do battle. <laughs> Well, that did not work out too well. Why did Komar run away, by the way? Look at him. Why are you over there? You imbecile. Ah, oh, I really don't know why he was like that. Ah, <laughs> oh, hilarious, hilarious. Okay, so this guy actually has something else. Bandit base. No, I'm not going to be doing another bandit base. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the whole bandit base thing at the best of times, especially considering there are so many people in them at the moment and uh there is actually another mod i have been perusing the mods a little bit but there is another mod what it does is it basically allows you to take as many units as you like into bandit hideouts so you're not limited to just five or something like that which i think is really cool i think that is a very very nice mod to have and i wanted to do something actually didn't i yes i wanted to go into my inventory Okay, so I've already spent all of my war horses and things like that, so I guess we'll just have to deal with it as it is. We have now gained another level as well, and now we're at war against Flandia. Why did... What? What, what actually happened there? Okay, because I thought to myself that they did declare war beforehand, but apparently they didn't, so that's a bit strange. Anyway, uh, I think I'm going to be leveling up my cunning some more, because I would personally like to get tactics as high as possible, but then also bear in mind that I would love to get leadership up. Don't know whether I'm going to be able to do that, but it would be super fun to be able to get bandits into noble troops. I think that would be a pretty powerful thing to do. Although I would also like to level up pole arm skills. So I'm actually going to go for pole arms, and then we will go for... Uh, leadership is going to be super important for us, but I'm going to go for uh, cunning here just so that my tactics can get a little bit faster leveled up. And then we have a trait here with our medicine. Medicine recovery chance applies to enemies too. Wounded members. Why would we Why would we want this? Why, why, why do we want this? Med medicine recovery chance applies to enemies too. That doesn't seem to make much sense considering you want to defeat them, right? Oh well, I think we're going to go for this if they work, because some of them uh, at the moment do not work, apparently. But uh, yeah, I'm actually going to go around and uh, try and recruit a bunch of people and obviously get some more horses too. All right, so I think it's about time that we enter another tournament. Now, I do have 2,300 gold, but I could always use a little bit more. So let's see if we can try and get that. Obviously, the helm is maybe going to be a bit of an upgrade for us as well, so I very much would appreciate that. Um, we are able to do some pretty nice damage right here as well. Hopefully I will not get... <laughs> Woohoo, that was a bit close. That guy was getting pretty pretty close with his pole arm right there. So we do want to be a bit cautious. Uh, I'm going to go for a nice... Ah, I was going to go for an overhead. An overhead thrust is usually quite good. It's usually quite good if you can if you can land it, as you can see right there. That does so much damage. And I know that a couple of people actually did mention that to me. A while ago and I was just saying to myself how am I ever gonna pull that off seems like a pretty highly skilled little uh, little maneuver that you can do but uh, me <laughs> me pulling off some kind of highly skilled maneuver oh yes that's, uh, that's one of those things that I might not be able to do anyway let's see if I can ah nice thank you Imperial recruit you did a good job right there eliminating my opponent now we can move on. All right, this is now a one versus one situation. Okay, let's do it. Uh, now the now the odds are quite firmly not in my favor anymore, so it is kind of making things mm, kind of hard. But yeah, there you go. Easy victory for us right there. And I uh, will skip the round there. <laughs> I mean, really, an Imperial recruit against a Kuzate heavy horse archer? Who do you think is going to win that? Ah, oh, yes. Anyway. Uh, betting is not going to get me any any money anymore, which is unfortunate, but what can you do? Oh, you're, you're done. You're done. Look at that. Crazy. Just took him out like no one's business. Really? Okay, well. Ah, now we have a spear. This is going to be the true test. The true test of one's improvement. Okay, let's see if I can just dodge a little bit. 
try and do some damage with a little bit of a wind up. There we go, a little bit of a wind up. Maybe might make a bit of a uh, bit of sense if I can actually make it work. Going round in circles. No, I'm now becoming dizzy. This is bad. <laughs> this is bad. There we go. He's a spear infantry. He should be used to this. He should be used to this. Take that spear infantry. Yes. That is what you get. Alright, so we did get an Eastern Helmet. I think the Eastern Helmet might be better than what we currently have on. So I'm not going to sell it by mistake. Because I apparently have done that multiple times now. Where I have literally gotten a cool item or, you know, armor piece or something like that. And then I end up selling it. Which is pretty awful of me. So let me actually just have a look. Ah, it is exactly the same as what I am currently wearing, actually, hilariously enough. Anyway, let's see if anyone else can wear some stuff. So as you can see, my auto-equip mod is now telling me that there is some new boot available. There are some new boots available, and that is what we're going to do for Komar right there. Bidal has actually returned for us, so we'll just tell him that he can uh, equip some new stuff too, and then we are pretty much good. So we will be uh, now selling a bunch of stuff. Another thousand for us, which is very nice. I did not download the stamina smithing mod yet. Uh, it is more than likely that I will be doing that. So we're going to see how that goes. Um, because I personally feel like that would be super fun to be able to uh, actually, you know, be able to do it more than like three times. You know, that would be quite fun because as you can see right there, three times and it's done, you know. I mean, you can wait for a little bit and then it will be perfectly acceptable and very, very fine and easy to restore your energy and things like that. But personally, I feel like it just, it's, it just shouldn't be that way, in my opinion. But, oh well. Not a big deal. That's, that's the reason why mods exist, of course. All right, so I actually thought that there was another village over here that had step horses available, but it doesn't seem like that is indeed the case. Very strange. I really thought they did. That That is very weird. Oh, well, whatever the case, I am actually going to be heading on over to Vlandian territory, and we're going to try and see if we can do battle with some of them. I think it will be quite fun and uh, a little bit nerve-wracking to find out. All right, so because of Bidar leveling up his riding skill, he was actually able to gain the trait where he can use any bow on horseback. I'm actually wondering whether that is indeed the case, because we have given him one. As you can see, this bow is quite clearly not usable on a horse, but it says that he can still, he, he says that he can use it. I'm not entirely sure if the trait is working though. That's the only thing, because there are a number of traits that are not working in the game at the moment. And this is very familiar territory for those of you that know Barney's series. We're actually spending a lot of time around these areas and uh, maybe just maybe i will be able to find a vassal that will want to do battle with me and uh, oh byron has gained another level very nice indeed okay so we got another focus point to spend i'm not entirely sure where to spend it at the moment uh to be fair because i've already gotten medicine tactics all that stuff leveled up we might want to go for athletics or Maybe charm? Charm could be very, very important for us, actually. Mm, yeah, I think we probably want to go for more charm, don't we? So let's get, uh, let's get a little bit of focus point in that. Because we do want to be a bit of a smooth talker. You know, we want to be a smooth talker. We want to try and make everyone our friend. And uh, that's going to be Byron's thing going forward. And most of the time, he's probably not going to execute people because that generally will then result in everyone hazing him. Uh, we know that we know what that's like, don't we? Yes. So we're going to be a bit careful about that. I would like to find a village that has horses, if at all possible. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, yes. I think I know where to go for that. All the way over here. Oh, no. It seems like the... Uh, <laughs> Seems like the Sturgeons have taken that. This uh, this one right here has a bunch of horses that you can get. Unfortunately, it has been taken by them, so I will no longer be able to do it. Oh, who do I spy but none other than Ingaltha himself? Oh, yes. I think I probably want to fight him, don't I? 
Yes, I certainly do. But first, I do have something to level up here. I actually do have a tactics level up. So we're just going to take that. It is a straightforward line right here. So your soldiers deal 5% more damage in simulations. Sounds pretty fun. Don't think anyone else leveled up, but there is actually something that I did gain here. I think I gained a new pair of gloves slash braces. And that is pretty cool because now what I can do is I can just literally go through everyone, click on equip best item, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Boom. They are going to be gaining better stuff. Oh, it seems like, uh, mm, wait a minute. So Komar, he, I think he is already wearing, I mean, I think he's already using a good bow, but apparently there is a better thing in, in the inventory right here. I don't see any, to be honest, but apparently there is something better for him because this is not it. Ah, oh, I guess it's really just, ah, oh, okay, okay. I think I know what the mod is doing here. So the mod has basically been like, oh, okay, so there's a very small discrepancy between the two of these items, and it's basically up to the player to decide what they want to wear and what they want to use. Personally, I feel like the step bow is probably going to be better because it does have slightly better missile speed, and missile speed being on a horse is probably going to be quite important. Otherwise, uh, yeah, the long bow obviously is going to be replaced as well if I... Um, well, actually, it's not going to be replaced, but as you can see, I mean, it's obviously much better. So nothing really to worry about there. But yeah, uh, Ingaltha. Ingaltha, I would love to be able to fight him. I'm just not entirely sure if I can win. I think I can win against this guy, Hecard himself. He's running away. He's got 19 Vlandian recruits. And there's more can as well. I'm actually wondering whether I can get both of them. Yes, I can. All right, so technically I can converse with this guy. Shall we converse with him, see what he has to say for himself? Because this is technically the default conversation screen that you're going to see at the beginning of every encounter with everyone. So bandits, lords, and so on. But the mod that I have installed skips that usually and just provides you it with a contextual menu so that it provides a little bit of a smoother and more fluid experience if you know exactly what you're going to do with these lords. In other words, fighting. Anyway, um, I think we're going to attack him. We're going to attack him because we are technically a mercenary and it is probably a good idea for us to attack. And you can see here that it now takes me to that screen, which it actually skipped to beforehand. So we're pretty good, I feel. We're pretty good. Anyway, I'm going to just leave my uh, infantry back here and I'll let everyone else auto-delegate themselves. I am a little bit injured as well, so we might have a bit of a problem there, but I'm hopeful that we'll be okay. Now, I'm hopeful that also because of the trait where the guy can actually use his bow on a mount, I'm hopeful that that is actually working. Otherwise, he is not using a bow and uh, he might be in a spot of trouble perhaps which would not be too good there's a nice headshot for us as well right there pretty nice okay i've got to be a bit careful here as well because let's face it i am not exactly great when it comes to horse archery but i'm i'm trying my best you know i'm trying to to learn how to be a little better at it and uh it seems to be going well so far with the exception of the few times that i end up uh, missing very very badly indeed but uh, this is actually pretty good practice because these guys literally are not trying to attack me for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why that is. But I guess it's... Uh... Oh, nice. That was a Vlandian knight. That is hilarious. Okay, let's take this. See if we can do some damage to him. No. Nope. Got to aim a little bit higher. Got to aim a little bit higher. But uh, we can, of course, couch. Couching is very, very fun. As well as sofaring. Sofaring is very fun as well. So, yes, you probably want to consider sofering sometimes. Anyway, we are... Uh, we're, we're pretty good. I feel, I feel like we're pretty good right here. I can couch almost infinitely. And I very much appreciate that. <laughs> really do appreciate that. The nice change to the couching. And I believe... Hmm, it's not a victory yet. It's not a victory yet. But it will be very, very soon. And my units have taken no casualties. No casualties whatsoever. The Kuzay units are very strong indeed. I think I have actually seen a comment from someone where they did say that the Kuzay units are very, very strong indeed. They're very powerful at what they do. And, uh, well, 
I'm actually looking forward to seeing just how powerful we can get. Anyway, as is the case with this, I will not be taking this guy prisoner. I will be letting him go. Aha! Oh, look at that. So letting him go gains us a nice charm skill as well as relation points with him. Because when I started releasing units at the very beginning of Barney's series, I did not receive any relation. As far as I'm aware, I didn't receive any relation at least. Maybe I missed it. Maybe I missed the message or something like that. But I, I as far as I can remember, did not receive anything like that. So we're just going to take all these prisoners. And we will definitely be taking all of this loot as well. As you can see, we have some upgrades here for us. We've got a, a spear upgrade and a shield upgrade. And boom, there you go. So now I have a Vlandia Lance and a light cavalry shield. And that is quite obviously better. As you can see right there, that is much better. Much better shield for us and a much better lance. Meh. It depends. It depends on what you really want. Because if you want more length, then use the Kuzate Lance. And if you want more damage then use the Vlandia Lance. I'm going to use the Vlandia Lance because I think it's quite fun to do so. And is there anything else here that we can equip? Yeah, we can equip a better weapon for him as well. So he's going to use a Vlandia Lance too. He's also going to be using a Vlandia Lance or a Kuzate Lance in this case as well. And I think it's probably about time for us to uh, run away from this fellow and maybe try and bait him into a bit of an attack. So now that we've leveled up our polearm skill, you can see here plus 15% to morale in uh, troops formations and uh, things like that so that's pretty cool but as you can quite clearly see i feel like the uh, the experience multiplier mod that i'm currently using it may seem very strong in the way that it upgrades skills now i know that a couple of people will probably not be very pleased about having uh, experience boosts or anything like that but here's the thing this is how it's balanced it's balanced because it is determined mostly by your focus points. So you can see right here, my polearm skill, I've only attacked a little bit with it, but I've attacked quite a bit and I, it's still only at 50. I did have it at, at about, what is it, 46 or something like that. So I've only gained four points in that time. And that is literally just due to my learning rate at the moment. So you can see right here, because of my skill focuses and so on, it is leveling at a 4.17 4 learning rate. In comparison, my riding skill is very, very quick. My bows are very, very quick. So if I'm actually good at using bows, then that's very, very fast. Same with tactics and medicine. My medicine is probably the fastest for me to level up at this point because I literally just have so many wounded soldiers all the time. But the point is, is that that's how it's balanced because it will not level up things like scouting, for example, because my scouting is really, really, really low. I have no focus points in it whatsoever. I don't really have that many base attribute points in it either. And that really has a big effect on how things work. So for example, my trade skill. My trade skill is still the same as it was when I started playing the game because even with the experience multiplier, it's not doing anything because I don't have any focus points in that particular skill. Same thing with the attribute points as well. So. In general, it does not break the game unless you want it to, <laughs> unless you want it to, and uh, you know, I think it's uh, I think it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to to have some uh, extra flexibility, I guess you could say, because let's face it, I was not receiving any skill points whatsoever for tactics and uh, riding skill. It was taking a long, long time to level those things up. So, in my opinion, it is a very, very cool thing to be able to change that to whatever you want. And that's the point. As I said before, I originally started with, I think it was like three times three or times four or something like that that I, that I tried out with the mod. And then I decided, oh no, I think that's a bit too much. So I just reloaded, obviously, because I was just doing some tests with it to begin with. And I thought, okay, this is a little better. So I went with just the, 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 the double experience. So if you do download it from my from the link in, in the description down below, then uh, have a grand old time, you know, have a grand old time because I'm pretty sure that a lot of people will be wanting a slightly easier time leveling up your 
uh, leveling up your skills because that is something that I have generally seen quite a lot of where people are saying, hey, what's going on with my skills? You know, I, I can't pay the bills because they are just so incredibly low and slow even. And uh, that's, that's the point. It's actually really nice to see this kind of thing coming out because I know in the original Warband it was kind of difficult to increase your well it wasn't difficult to increase your experience gain but there wasn't a mod for it or I think there might have been but I obviously don't know about that kind of that kind of, those kinds of mods I mostly focused on new campaigns total conversions all kinds of gameplay changes and so on and so forth rather than quality of life improvements and things like that but this mod really does make a huge difference, as well as the conver conversation mod as well, and the auto equip mod too, really makes a huge difference. Anyway, I was about to click on You Are My Prisoner now, because that is kind of a habit with Barney for me, but I'm going to let him go, and we've gained some relation with their clan. And I did not gain any charm this time, did you notice that? I didn't gain any charm this time. So there's also that. Anyway, I will be looting everything, and aha, I seem to have a new lance. They've given me a Vlandian Heavy Lance, which has a length of 198. What a crazy length that is. Alright, these guys can also get some new boots. Look at that, new boots, new gloves. Very nice, new gloves right here. New shield, new lance. Yeah, there we go. And that is it. How easy. And you don't have to go through all of your annoying inventory. You can basically just be like, oh, okay, so I've got some upgrades here. Oh, that's pretty cool. And then you can find the items in particular. If you want to, compare them. And you can do that. You know, it's, it's completely up to you. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, obviously. But that's the wondrous thing about sandbox games. I very much enjoy sandbox games a great deal. Especially when they allow mods. I mean, that's the thing. Most sandbox games will allow mods, but there you go. So there, there are two fights, and we actually did a pretty good job, in my opinion. I feel like we did quite nicely. I'm actually wondering if... Um, hmm, are there any companions with engineering? I think there might be a couple of companions with engineering. I would like to speak to Ingalther, if at all possible, but he's probably going to want to fight us, isn't he? So... That might that might happen. I I am not entirely sure about that. Anyway, uh, yeah, why not? Why not? Let's let's go and speak to him. We need to we do need to go and speak to him about the Pendrake thing anyway. And um, I'm going to attack him. I would love to execute this guy because he was kind of a a bit of a betrayer in the previous uh, previous series in, in Barney series. Anyway, I was there. I was just a young squire then. I have heard no sweeter music than the thunder of our hooves as we bore down on the Azurai rabble. We fell on them like a falcon plunges upon a rabbit. They had overextended themselves, chasing the imperial archers. Light foot before our knights, there was no contest. Let me tell you something. Nine-tenths of victory is recognizing when your enemy has made a mistake. The rash perish as swiftly as the weak, and deserve it just as much. We would have gone on to seize all the Western Empire, if death art had had any manhood, would have done so. But his heart was never in the war. He believed he'd broken his oath to the Empire by helping the Sturgeons, and it gnawed at him. He'd have made a fine lackey. Instead, he's our king. Yes. Well, now, here's the thing. I kind of agree with Ingalther at this point, because I have had enough of death art. <laughs> quite a bit, and quite enough of him, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, let me actually attack him. I'm not entirely sure why I was not able to attack him right there, but I am going to attack him now. And uh, once again, we will just do auto-delegate. And I will actually let my infantry do their own thing this time, because they're not really leveling up that fast. And I'd like to get them into the fight a little bit more than they have recently been. Now, this is a very even battle, by the way. Bear that in mind. This is an extremely even battle. And I'm kind of a bit worried about... You know what? I'm going to tell everyone to follow me real quick. Because I am a bit worried about them going onto the bridge and getting themselves stuck in the riverbank. So I'm hopeful that what we can do is maybe draw in Galtha's forces over the bridge and we can maybe see about uh, what's currently going on. If he can come over here, then I would very much appreciate that. Mm, 
yes, he's getting impatient. He's getting impatient, as you can see. He's moving his archers to the very entry of the bridge. And these 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 uh, these trees you can actually walk through by the looks of things. Some of them you can. And look, look, they're actually coming across, and and they're getting they're getting all kinds of messed up, aren't they? Look at that. That's fantastic. That is really really good. So what we're gonna do is because horse archers generally tend to go in a circle around their prey, we are going to do exactly that right now. Let's do it. Okay, so now if I can just get out my bow, try and do some damage to them as well, I will be very pleased indeed. Oh, nice headshot. Okay, so if I can do a little bit more here as well, that would be nice. And so far, everything seems to be going very nicely indeed. Because let's face it, if you're up against a massive army of horse archers, even if they're just mid-tier, it's probably going to be quite easy for them to just run rings around you, quite literally. So, definitely something to bear in mind there, and I'm hopeful that I will be able to continue leveling up my bows. As you can see, my bow skill does not level up super fast. So, definitely going to need to be a little bit more adequate in regards to shooting people with my arrows and you can see that we're actually starting to lose a couple of people here as well because well that's what happens you know that's what happens but my my tactic skill on the other hand my tactic skill is becoming much much better and bear in mind you've seen me you've seen me in earlier episodes of this series you've seen me uh have a huge amount of um huge amount of uh, auto resolves and things like that and I have been attempting to do as many as I possibly can to try and level up my tactic skill as much as possible and it just has not really done much I mean that's the point that's kind of also the reason why I decided hey I'm just gonna go and get something you know go and get a, a small experience boost just to give us a little extra progression on these things because I personally would love to see some of the later traits from these, uh, from these, you know, skills, and uh, if I if I don't have anything like this, we're never going to see them. You know, we're just never going to see them, and I feel like that is a massive shame. Because I mean, I guess what is potentially a thing is that they're maybe not working the traits, and if they are not working, then they're not working, and that's just how it has to be. But I would like to have the opportunity to find out for myself and see see all these really really powerful traits and, and see how they do for us i think that's going to be a, a really fun thing to do anyway uh i believe that is indeed a victory for us it's just a matter of time before we eliminate the last remaining cavalry of the opponent seems like they're actually starting to be a little bit slippery to eliminate here but uh yeah personally what i would say is the leveling speed itself i think is decent it might be a bit too fast with my current settings but as i've said the mod itself is completely customizable you can do whatever you want with it and uh you know as i say i am on double the speed because usually because basically what it is is the default value for all experience is one and then, dependent on how much you increase it, then that will give you times two, times three, times four, and so on. And that's the kind of thing that you can customize. And my multipliers are all on two. So that should theoretically give me times two, but maybe I have inadvertently made it times four by making it times two in a couple of different areas. But that's not really here nor there, to be honest. I mean, that's the point. It doesn't really affect you if you're not going to download the mod anyway, but it is a very cool thing to be able to experience some of the higher, higher level traits a little bit easier. But there you go. That is indeed a victory for us. And Ingaltha has been taken down. And this is a very nice amount of renown for us as well, by the way, and obviously the influence too is going to maybe come in handy. I'm not entirely sure if it will really make any sense considering I think as soon as you leave um, any kind of affiliation with a particular faction, you lose all of your influence. I'm not entirely sure if that is indeed the case, but I guess we'll find that out at a later time. Anyway, we're going to leave this guy. going to let him go. And you can see he's smiling there. <laughs> Oh, he's like, yes, I'm smiling at you as I stare deep into your soul. Yeah, also, we did gain uh, Charm 25, which is pretty nice, too. 
Anyway, I don't think I... Oh, I can actually take some people. Very nice. Didn't actually know that I could take any of them. But uh, yeah, that's pretty good. And we will be taking as many people as I can here. And I've changed my horse now as well. So I now have a step war horse, as you can see. Maybe there's actually something better for me? No, no, there isn't. The mod is doing a fantastic job, as per usual. Now, bear in mind... There is something to uh, take into account when you're using the auto equip mod. If you if you download it, what will happen is if you have a spear in a particular slot, the mod will only look for upgrades of spears. So, for example, if I were to put a one-handed axe in that slot, then it's only going to look for one-handed axe upgrades because it assumes that you just want to use that particular weapon type. So bear that in mind if you do download the auto-equip mod that it will be um, looking for the same types of stuff for you. So yeah, there's that. Anyway, as you can see right here, so Yana, for example, um, is using a sword here and obviously this is a, a better sword than what she was using and then we obviously have a couple of other upgrades here for some of our people and that's basically it but I just wanted to let you know that there is a little caveat there in regards to what the mod actually does anyway so we're going to go for this 30% siege bombardment casualties get wounded instead of killed and we're also going to take Charm, and we're going to go for introducing yourself to Lords for the first time. 10% chance to gain two, per, two relation with them. Personally, I feel like this is pretty good, but 10% chance is quite low. I personally would prefer to have a, I don't know, 35% chance or something like that. Allows you to place your troops before all battles. Ooh, now that seems pretty fun. Haven't actually used that ever before, so it should be quite a lot of fun to find out exactly what's going on with it and we do have another focus point available for us as well so i'm going to be specking into charm again because i personally feel like charm is going to be super fun for us as we move forward in our conquest of calradia and potentially reconstructing the kurjit Kurgi carnate as well anyway i thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time